humans came to love the Anunnaki and form a relationship with them. Can you tell us anything about the DNA splicing genetic procedures that they used? Was it like with microscopes and knives, or how, how did they do it? A little bit of that was necessary to get some genetic material at points, but really they could use hairs and small bits of nails and dead skin to get the genetic information that was relevant to replicate it, and they created a fetus through the splicing of these genetic materials that they would then impregnate in the both members members of both races and allow these beings to mate and naturally create the rest of their species. Right. And the DNA is kind of coiled up. Did they have some procedure for uncoiling it and then manipulating it at a, a nano level? Yes. And they had quite precise understanding of what each part of the DNA, what the functions were? Yes. Psychically, they were able to perceive this. Okay. So when they created the new beings, they then needed to do, like, education and create a language and social structures and all these kind of things? Yes. They taught them their language. They built the structures for them. So... Do, do any does anything remain today of the Anunnaki language? Not necessarily, though. That sound on and words that contain it do resonate with their frequency, and some different stories and archetypes can be connected to the Anunnaki across your world cultures, as there was an ancient memory that could not be erased. Hmm, this is fascinating. I've I've heard it said how many words there are with that an and anu sound in, like January, and so many words have an and anu in them, in English at least. Um, and that's what you're talking about, that it, it's still there in our language from the Anunnaki original language. Correct. It's there as well intentionally to continuously e invoke the Anu. But they're long gone. They're not uh, invoked in any way nowadays. Everything is here and now. So you can connect with frequencies from the past, the future, and other timelines and bring them into the present. By e invoking them, it doesn't matter how long ago it's been, their frequency can be present. And we will say this isn't necessarily a positive or negative frequency for you. It is a part of your awakening. It is a part of your understanding your origins and can help you awaken some of the same sorts of telepathy as you come to understand the existence of such beings. I want to ask about how the first few individuals were created and then they interbreeded and how they had education and family structures uh, were they kind of looked after as if it was a zoo or something uh, and how were they educated for the tasks they wanted them to do well they were given great love and comfortable lives though they were guided and taught to work from very young ages. They did not suffer so much. They had somewhat affectionate relationships with their Anunnaki counterparts who dominated them and directed them, but gave them spiritual blessings and material comforts as a reward. They were not worked 
as hard as you might consider slave labor in your world, though that's essentially what they were. But in many ways, the initial humans at this time were dog-like, you could say, but with much more capabilities in the way that you keep your dogs and you direct them and you do whatever it is you wish with them, essentially, and their nature as dogs is to unconditionally love you. And because the Anu created you, they uh, were able to program you to behave in such a way. That's incredible. So how did they regulate the numbers? There must have been a particular optimal population before it became problematic. How did they keep the numbers at a steady amount? They knew what they were doing in that regard. But they had made some mistakes at times, yes. Sometimes different disasters and mistakes would happen on their other colonies on other planets. Okay, I mean, there's many aspects they'd have to think of. The, the, the food production and distribution, the waste disposal, the clothing, uh, activities, the time off as well as the time working. They had a very advanced and well-functioning society on their own planet at that time. So many of these things were not such a difficulty for them. It was simply adapting to new planets that they were unfamiliar with that posed different challenges for them that they didn't always succeed at. But their plans were more successful on Earth itself. Can you describe the physical work in mining the gold? Uh, in those days? They had rather advanced machinery to break up the sediment and sift through it. Sometimes they would go into deep mines. It's not so unsimilar from your modern gold mining, but they have far more advanced tools. And they had specifically designed magnets that could pull the gold from materials once they were well broken up. Well, I see. We're not familiar with gold being magnetic in any way. They made a specific technology that could isolate certain structures in elements like gold and magnetize them specifically. It has to do with vibration. Can you be more specific? Every element and molecule has its own specific type of vibration. And there can be a technology that pulls toward it a similar vibration by attracting these other elements. There are are very strange sorts of ways that the technologies extraterrestrials develop can bend the laws of the limited science that you know by tapping into quantum energy. So all of these technologies work with quantum energy. You're saying with consciousness, they work with consciousness. Yes, and subatomic structures. Because when you say quantum energy, I, I can only think of consciousness. Is there some other aspect that you're talking about there? Of course, the scientific technologies and machines are used in conjunction with this consciousness in these technologies. And we cannot elaborate very specifically on that through this channel at this time, but we can lay down the basics, which we have. Okay, that's that's fair enough. Thank you very much. Um, when you talk about the vibration, are you talking about the frequency, like a pure sine wave, or the combination of different frequencies into a complicated oscillating pattern, like 
chords in music. Is is that what you're saying about the vibration of gold and other things? Every piece of matter in your world is vibrating energy. You think of it as something solid, but essentially it is as well at a multidimensional level vibrating energy. Like sonic waves that move. These particles are also stretched across space and time and other dimensions at subtle levels. And this is why when you work with things like crystals, there is also an energetic transmission of that information coming into your auric field and your cellular body. So by developing specific technologies that work at these multidimensional levels, there can be tremendous effects on matter, including moving it or magnetizing it and much more. That's amazing. That's amazing. As you're speaking, there's an image comes to my mind that um, it's more like the waves on an ocean than kind of a tuning fork that's vibrating. It, it's, is that, when you say multidimensional, it, it's more fluid? Yes. Hmm. Okay. What kind of population was there that the Anunnaki had if effectively for mining. I mean, it can't have been too few and it can't have been too many. There must have been a particular number where it was, it was just the right number to operate and keep the thing going. The Anunnaki created one billion of the original humanoid species that evolved into you on planet Earth, though there was another two billion humans dispersed on many other planets, about 24, and only few of these planets survived. On a spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five-year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars, a celestial encounter on a future Noah's Ark, and you will hear us coming as we whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here. Yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi as we whisper in the dark. Like a spark, I am lying at a scene. 